in designing the Church of San Lorenzo and the Foundling Hospital, Brunelleschi worked rigorously to create a unified mathematical system. His work on those projects led him to then create a new system to construct an illusion of three-dimensional depth on a two-dimensional surface. That system is known as one-point linear perspective or mathematical perspective, and it would change Western art fundamentally. Flip back to the beginning for a moment. If you consider basic elements of art, particularly the two-dimensional arts of drawing and painting, there are various techniques for making an illusion of recession in space, to make things seem to be going back. You can make objects overlap, you can make them get smaller, and you can use perspective. There are many kinds of perspective. The term in general simply means techniques artists use to adjust angles and proportions in order to suggest how things actually look to the human eye. So painters have had lots of experience using perspective to create an illusion of depth, but they tended to rely on what we call intuitive perspective because Brunelleschi hadn't come around yet. So working intuitively, an artist like the master of Flamal can make some very con convincing senses of recession back in space so that the buildings seen through the window are get smaller and therefore feel very far away. However, there are certain elements in the room that are not 100% convincing because the angles at which things converge are a little bit too extreme. Brunelleschi figures out a way for everyone to fix that. And what he figures out is based very much on the idea of the braccia, the repeated standardized unit that he had developed at San Lorenzo. So here is a diagram and it's mapping out the perspective system on a panel, a relief panel made by Donatello's friend, excuse me, Brunelleschi's friend Donatello. And Brunelleschi probably helped Donatello figure out the perspective on this. We know that Brunelleschi made some panels that showed the perspectival system, but they've been lost. So we have to reconstruct what he did. And here, this reconstruction shows you that you have a square unit, like the square unit 20 by 20 braccia in the church, and it's repeated. So he makes a grid, and the grid has squares of the same measurement. They're used as a systematic tool for measuring things in proportion. Once you've made that grid, you create your horizon line and extending from the horizon line, you will have a distance point. In the middle of the horizon line, you're going to pick your focal point and you have these diagonal lines that are called orthogonals. orthogonals. They're lines that seem to converge into the focal point or vanishing point. Because if you ever look at cartoons where Bugs Bunny is chasing Roadrunner down a railroad track, the railroad track always seems to converge, right? The two lines in the distance converge together. If you're driving down the freeway and you look far down the road, it seems to converge. So Brunelleschi is making the most of that phenomenon of human sight and he's systemizing it so that you have a focal point, you have orthogonals, and then from your distance point, if you're Donatello or another Renaissance artist, you can map out lines from there and look what you have. You have a system for making this grid this tiled floor, and you use the tiled floor and the squares to measure the proportions of all the objects and the figures so that they shrink systematically in proportion as they go back, just as all the parts of the church were interrelated.
This seems so simple, and yet it's actually so powerful. Look here at Perugino's painting of Jesus giving the keys to St. Peter, set in ancient Rome with ancient Roman architecture, and look at Perugino's grid and his orthogonals. You can't really see the vanishing point because it's in the building, but feel how the, the, the space feels like it plunges way back. We have a sense of tremendous depth. And his grid is allowing him to proportionately figure out how the figures in the foreground will be how much bigger than the figures that are in the middle ground or the very far background. So artists like this artist, Raphael, who master Brunelleschi's one-point linear perspective system, can create this amazingly consistent illusion. And the spatial depth within that illusion is so deep. And it feels like nothing is out of proportion because it's all about measurement. And one of the first painters to take this up will be Masaccio, a fr another friend of Brunelleschi's. And we think Brunelleschi might have helped Masaccio work out the orthogonals and the linear perspective on this painting. And this diagram here helps you to understand that in terms of the one point, you have the one point, you have the vanishing point in the painting, but you also have a viewing point. So this is a system of perspective that imagines a, a viewer standing in a correct or preferred optimal viewing point to experience maximum depth. And in an interesting twist on the Brunelleschi and Ghiberti rivalry, when Ghiberti gets a commission to make a second set of doors for the Florentine baptistry. He will actually completely radically rethink how he approaches this because he will be influenced by what Brunelleschi has shown can be done with linear perspective. Ghiberti will use complete panels, not small, um, smaller panels set within a decorative frame. And in those panels, Ghiberti will create depth using the techniques of one-point linear perspective, even though this is sculptural, this is relief sculpture, and these figures here are all fully three-dimensional. Some of the figures are more two-dimensional, and Ghiberti's even using the illusion of three-dimensional depth to make it feel like this world here goes back just as much as it comes out. And look at the tiles on the, on the ground plane, which are creating that system of measurement. This is why every single Renaissance painting you will see almost always has a complicated tile floor, because it's the basis for mapping out the space mathematically. 